Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonzom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 22nd of June. India registers massive jump in new cases. COVID-19 tally tops 425,000. Pakistan's local governments disconnected from citizens, says UNDP report. And Bangladesh government workers protest retrenchment demand back pay. And now for all the details. India on Monday added 14,821 new COVID-19 cases, pushing the infection tally to 425,282. Amid rising cases, fresh measures were announced by the government as Indian capital Delhi became the state with the second highest number of coronavirus cases in the country after Maharashtra. India's COVID-19 count reached 425,282 on Monday with an increase of 14,821 new cases and 445 deaths. According to India's Health Ministry, 13,699 deaths have been recorded due to the infection so far in the country. Western Maharashtra province with 132,075 confirmed cases remains the worst affected by the infection so far in the country. National capital Delhi became the second worst affected region in the country with the number of confirmed cases reaching 59,746. Delhi Chief Minister at a media briefing on Monday said that there has been three times increase in testing. Earlier it was 5,000 tests per day and now people will not face any issues in getting tested. Kendra Sarkar ki madad se Delhi mein antigen test bhi shuru kiye gaye hain. एंटीजन टेस्ट रैपिड टेस्ट होता है 15 मिनट में आधे घंटे में पता चल जाता है तो इस टाइम दिल्ली के अंदर लगभग 18000 टेस्ट डेली हो रहे हैं अर्लियर इंडियाज इंटीरियर मिनिस्टर अमित शाह हेल्ड अ मीटिंग ऑन संडे विद केजरीवाल एंड अदर सीनियर हेल्थ ऑफिशियल्स ऑन द कोरोना वायरस सिचुएशन वेयर इट वाज डिसाइडेड टू होल्ड मोर रोबस्ट कांटेक्ट ट्रेसिंग रिवेम द एंटायर कंटेनमेंट जोन स्ट्रेटजी एंड स्ट्रेंथन मेडिकल सर्विसेज इन एरियाज मोस्ट अफेक्टेड बाय द वायरस an Indian Army soldier on Monday lost his life as Pakistan resorted to heavy cross-border shelling during the ongoing ceasefire violation at the line of control in Rajori district of India's Jammu and Kashmir territory. According to a defence spokesperson, Pakistan violated the ceasefire in several sectors in Poonch and Rajori districts earlier on Monday. In a separate incident, an encounter was underway in Jammu and Kashmir's Anantnag district till the last reports came in. The encounter broke out after security forces launched a search and cordon operation on Monday morning after receiving specific information about the presence of militants in the Kapran forest area of Anantnag. This came a day after at least three militants were gunned down by security forces in an encounter in Srinagar city of Jammu and Kashmir. Moving on to news from Pakistan. The United Nations Development Programme in its latest report has suggested that local governments around the world were at the forefront of the current COVID-19 crisis, but in Pakistan, these institutions were to an extent disconnected from its citizens and saddled with a governance style which is top-down, reactive and authoritative. The UN Development Programme or UNDP in its latest report has said that local governments around the world were at the forefront of the current COVID-19 crisis, but in Pakistan, these institutions were to an extent disconnected from its citizens and settled with a governance style which is top-down, reactive and authoritative. The report based on COVID-19 impacts in Pakistan says, despite efforts to provide an adequate response to the coronavirus pandemic in the country, results remain poor. Whether traders and businessmen in Pakistan are dissatisfied by the federal government's unilateral decisions affecting their businesses amid the virus outbreak, the health professionals are too raising concerns over the lack of an efficient system of testing and tracking, the UNDP report said. 
As of Monday, Pakistan reported 181,088 COVID-19 cases with 3,590 associated deaths. The government has not done any work in two years. It has not been done until now. It has not been done until now. According to the UNDP report, it is believed that the presence of elected local governments would have created an effective bridge between the government and the population, diffusing the current situation in which the citizens have been losing trust in governmental decisions. Currently, elected local governments are not present in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Punjab and Balochistan, while functional local governments are present only in Sindh and Islamabad capital territory to abide by the constitutional role. The United Nations on Sunday released a special report expressing concerns over what it called recent deliberate attacks against healthcare workers and facilities in Afghanistan during the COVID-19 pandemic. The report documents incidents between 11 March when the pandemic was first declared to 23 May, the start of a 3D ceasefire between the Taliban and the Afghan government. The United Nations on Sunday released a special report expressing concerns over what it called recent deliberate attacks against healthcare workers and facilities in Afghanistan during the COVID-19 pandemic. The United Nations Assistance Mission in Afghanistan, or UNEMA, said it documented 12 incidents of deliberate acts of violence between March 11 and May 23. The report said eight of the incidents were carried out by Taliban insurgents, while three incidents were attributed to Afghan security forces. The most horrific attack on a maternity ward last month at a Kabul hospital that killed 24 people remains unsolved. Following the attack on the Kabul maternity hospital, Doctors Without Borders decided last week to end its operations in Kabul. The Taliban promptly denied involvement in the May 12 attack. The United States said it bore all the hallmarks of the Islamic State groups affiliate in Afghanistan and that the attack targeted the country's minority Shiites in a neighborhood of Kabul. The UN report emphasized that deliberate acts of violence against healthcare facilities are prohibited under international humanitarian law and constitute war crimes. Though international aid organizations monitoring the pandemic's spread in Afghanistan say their numbers are much higher because of a lack of access and testing capabilities. Afghanistan has 29,143 confirmed coronavirus cases with 598 deaths. In news from Bangladesh, hundreds of angry garment workers were out on the streets of capital Dhaka on Sunday protesting the loss of jobs and demanding back pay due to the closure of factories to prevent the spread of coronavirus. Hundreds of angry garments workers were out on the streets of Dhaka on Sunday protesting the loss of jobs and demanding back pay due to the closure of factories to prevent the spread of the coronavirus and evaporating demand for clothes from the international brands. Carrying banners and shouting slogans, they gathered in front of the Labour Ministry with former employees of the Windy Group, one of the largest garment industry groups in the country, calling for a token hunger strike. The group take, took the decision to retrench these 3,000 workers of this group. This group actually the supplier of Zara, H&M and Primark. So we are demanding reinstate these 3,000 workers with their back salary and to stop union busting in the windy group. Bangladesh has around 4,000 clothing factories which employ about 4 million people. Garment exports fell by 84% in the first half of April as 3 billion US dollars worth of orders were cancelled or suspended due to the global store closures according to factory owners. The number of new orders has also decreased. According to a government report, at least 17,000 garment workers have lost their lives since orders started being cancelled in March this year. A key parliamentary panel in Nepal has proposed to amend the country's Citizenship Act with the provision that foreign women married to Nepali men will have to wait for seven years to acquire naturalized citizenship. Nepal's Parliamentary State Affairs and Good Governance Committee on Sunday endorsed an amendment bill on the Citizenship Act 2063 
with the provision that foreign women married to Nepali men will have to wait for seven years to acquire naturalized citizenship. The House Committee had been debating the bill for the last two years. The committee went ahead with the seven-year provision after the ruling Nepal Communist Party or NCP took a decision to that effect on Saturday. The foreign woman is reported to get residence permit till she is eligible for citizenship. Nepal's main opposition parties, the Nepali Congress, Samaj Bari Party Nepal and Rashtra Janata Party Nepal oppose the provision calling it unconstitutional. They also pointed out that amendment does not speak about foreign men who are married to Nepali women. The amendment bill that has been finalized through majority votes in the parliamentary committee will now be presented before the parliament for endorsement. Protests against China continued in India on Monday to condemn the killing of 20 Indian soldiers in a violent border face-off with Chinese troops in the mountainous region of Ladakh last week. Indian traders burned Chinese goods in capital New Delhi asking federal and provincial governments to support a boycott of Chinese goods and cancel government contracts awarded to Chinese companies. Protests against China continued in India on Monday to condemn the killing of 20 Indian soldiers in clashes with Chinese troops in Ladakh last week. Confederation of All India Traders or CAIT, an Indian traders' body, burnt Chinese goods in capital New Delhi, asking federal and provincial governments to support a boycott of Chinese goods and cancel government contracts awarded to Chinese companies. चाइना ने जिस प्रकार से लद्दाख में भारतीय सैनिकों के साथ जो बर्बरतापूर्ण व्यवहार किया उससे पूरे देश में एक रोष और आक्रोश का माहौल है और देश के व्यापारियों ने तय किया है कि हम चाइना की वस्तुओं का बहिष्कार करेंगे और 31 दिसंबर 2021 तक चाइना से हिंदुस्तान में जो सामान आता है उसमें एक लाख करोड़ रुपए की कमी करेंगे while blaming each other for the bloodshed last week, China and India have sought to avoid any escalation that could risk further conflict between the two nuclear-armed states. Under long-observed protocols, both militaries refrained from firing weapons and the last time there was a deadly clash on the disputed border was in 1967. People in parts of the world including India, Pakistan and Nepal witnessed the first solar eclipse of the year on Sunday. Most locations saw only a partial eclipse with just a handful witnessing the true ring of fire. People in parts of the world including India witnessed the first solar eclipse of the year on Sunday. The sky grew dark over India as Hindu priests held rituals and took holy dips as the solar eclipse took place. Hindu temples were closed in some cities 12 hours before the eclipse as according to Hindu beliefs, celestial bodies like the sun and moon emit negative energies during an eclipse and they may cause in effects of divine energy on devotees. सुदक के समय में व्यक्ति को जितना भी समय रहता है भगवान के भजन और पूजन में व्यतीत करना चाहिए और इसके पश्चात जब सूत ग्रहण का मोक्ष हो जाता है तो उस समय दान धर्म का इस्नान ध्यान करके दान धर्म करना चाहिए और दान धर्म करके जो है वो अपने इच्छाओं की कामना के लिए अपने पुण्य प्रताप के लिए दान धर्म करके स्नान ध्यान करना चाहिए in neighboring Pakistan, people in the country's commercial city of Karachi went outside to see the partial eclipse. Some also gathered at a mosque to pray to mark the eclipse. We have first time that it was very good. We have Meanwhile, in Nepal, the celestial event on Sunday lasted for about three and a half hours which was witnessed in almost all regions of the country. The path of Sunday's eclipse spanned East Asia, South Asia, the Middle East and Africa. Most locations saw only a partial eclipse, with just a handful witnessing the true ring of fire. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia. This is it. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com slash asianewsline.com. 
and follow us on Twitter at as Asia News Live. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.